This case of strange lights spotted by pilots is not that different from other cases in its resolution. But before I get to that resolution, there's an interesting backstory. At the Congressional UFO hearing on July 26th, pilot Ryan Graves gave an opening statement saying, Pilots are reporting UAP at altitudes that appear above them at 40,000 feet, potentially in low Earth orbit or in the gray zone below the Kármán line, making inexplainable maneuvers like right-hand turns and retrograde orbits or J-hooks. Sometimes these reports are reoccurring, with numerous recent sightings north of Hawaii and in the North Atlantic. I recognize this as something we've been investigating at Metabunk. Pilots were reporting odd moving lights, but in every single case where we had enough data to determine where they were, the time and date, and what direction they were looking in, it turned out to be Starlink flares. I tweeted about it and went on TV to say this. Well, Ryan Graves had a more detailed statement and he raised some interesting issues, one of which was that a lot of commercial pilots had been seeing uh, what they describe as UFOs high up in space. Uh, but that is something that you know, I've been looking at uh, on my website Metabunk with my team on Metabunk and we've determined that the vast majority of those are actually Starlink satellites despite what Ryan Graves is saying about it. All right, McWest. A few weeks later, Ryan Graves was on TV again describing similar cases. I have noticed from commercial pilots that there is absolutely an uptick. Pilots that are doing those transatlantic or transpacific flights are seeing uh, various objects, lights that are coming down, uh, behaving in strange ways, uh, holding in a pattern, um, look like almost like they're dogfighting in space in some way, kind of almost kind of back and forth with each other. I've reported that coming out near the, the Big Dipper in the hearings. And since then, I've heard from many other pilots that have reported similar sightings, uh, that match the same description uh, in other parts, such as uh, in north-south flights uh, off the eastern seaboard and elsewhere. Um, Again, I tweeted about this, saying it was consistent with Starlink, and I explained how to check. Find where the sun is, and if it's 40 to 45 degrees below the horizon, and if the lights are fading in and out directly above the sun, then it's Starlink. Ryan Graves later tweeted that he was going to share some of the sightings. Two minutes later, in what seemed like a response to me, he said, Starlink is the new weather balloon, by which he was implying that Starlink had become the default explanation for any UFO, like weather balloons were supposedly years ago. This was a little ironic, as we'll see in a bit, as was his next tweet, quoting, It is impossible for a man to learn what he thinks he already knows. A little later, he posted the recorded sighting. There was a seven-minute cockpit video, four photos, and a written statement from one pilot. The video shows what looks like classic Starlink flares. Bright lights fade into existence, move in a straight line, and then fade out again. This looks exactly like many other examples we've seen over the last year. Unfortunately, there are no easily identifiable stars visible in the video, and we don't have a precise time, so it's not as easily resolvable to specific satellites as in some cases. The photos are not super useful due to camera shake, except that in a couple of them we can see the Big Dipper, so we know where we are looking. But to determine if we are looking at Starlink satellites, we need to know the date and time and the approximate location. From the report, we know they were flying from Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic to JFK in New York. They were taking the L-453 route, which is quite a bit offshore. They departed at around 2305 Santo Domingo time, which is 0305 the next day in UTC. So knowing all that, I looked at a few flights departing Santo Domingo and found one that matched, JetBlue 1910, departing on July 23rd. It might be the right one, but even if it isn't, it's a good baseline for a typical flight on that route. We've got two other bits of info. The report says the first lights were spotted about an hour into the flight. And then the video, taken a little bit later, shows that we are 163 nautical miles from the Borex waypoint. So we can use that to get a position for the video's recording within one nautical mile at that point. That ends up being a few miles past the one hour after departure position, so it all matches. So now we can stick this all into Stellarium. We set the position and altitude, the date and time, and add the TLE data file that has the Starlink satellites for that week. Then we look at the Big Dipper, like in the photo. Now we can do the check for, is it Starlink? We want to check if the lights are fading in and out a bit above the horizon when the sun is about 40 to 45 degrees below the horizon, below that point. So, 
we turn off the ground, then from the position of the lights, we go straight down. And hey, there's the sun, directly underneath the lights, and at minus 42 degrees, it's exactly where you'd expect. Then if we play it in real time, we see there's a constant stream of Starlink satellites being hit by the sun. So once again, a pilot report about mysterious lights near the horizon turns out to be entirely consistent with Starlink satellites. If we had the exact date and time, then we could probably identify the exact satellites in the photos and video. But it's pretty clear regardless that most, if not all, of what this pilot was seeing was simply the same thing that many other pilots have reported and failed to identify. Starlink satellites briefly reflecting the sun when the sun is about 40 to 45 degrees below them. So what's going on? Graves told Congress in his written statement that the pilots are trained observers, often former military pilots with decades of flying experience, who say they understand Starlink flares and are adamant that it is not the explanation. And yet we see time and again these cases resolve into something that looks exactly like Starlink, in the same spot, moving at the same speed, in the same direction, and exactly above the sun. So it's almost certainly Starlink, and the pilots are making similar mistakes over and over again. Graves also said that the footage is poor quality, and said, it'll be important to consider the pilot's accounting of the experience. But here we have used the pilot's accounts and the footage, and it still looks like Starlink. Ryan Graves is trying to get people to take pilot reports of UFOs seriously, but by uncritically repeating claims that have mundane explanations, and by mocking and ignoring those explanations, it's just going to make it harder to give future reports any credence. We want less stigma regarding UFO sightings. We want pilots to be able to report things that they see. But having lots of low quality reports is far worse than a few good reports. Let's educate the pilots about Starlink Horizon flares and start looking for the real UFOs.